This is another epic segment, prepping the bedroom wing for Shotcrete. To start at an earlier point in the project, click one of these links. This chapter starts with John and Hunter and their window buck assembly line. We actually cut the radius curves into the buck to ensure that the concrete guys will trowel in that nice curved shape. Before the windows could be installed in the apps, we put in a horizontal piece of rebar just to hold them up at the right height and then we fit the windows in between the tube steel. Then John and Hunter got to work putting up rebar in another part of the build. Originally the rebar is just tied in with wire just to keep it in place, but then later we'll come back and weld it. For these groin sections we put up pieces of rebar that were bent 90 degrees in the middle. For the apps, we curved 20 foot long pieces and then trimmed them at the apex. The trimmings could then be reused elsewhere on the apps, leaving very little waste. My kids are often up for welding lessons. Their welds are good enough, but sooner or later they want to run and play. John decided to take over the welding on this part. Then Sherry arrived with her screen fabric and lath. Again, the idea here is that the lath holds the weight of the concrete and forms a nice inner surface for plastering later. And the fine screen just keeps any of the concrete from blowing through the lath. It's tied loosely so that the concrete can get in between the rebar and the lath. But that left a bit of balance, so later we actually came back and put in some rebar chairs just to maintain that distance more in a more controlled way. While Sherry continues with the lath, I moved on with the welding. The welding really stiffens up the structure so it won't shake the shotcrete off. It also makes it feel much safer for climbing on. Sherry mostly took care of the lath and screen by herself, with sometimes with one of the kids. But there are times when it's just much faster with two adults, and we often work until dark. Another day of welding, mostly there are just spot welds between the rebar, but sometimes I'll do a little more substantial weld where the rebar crosses the tube steel. So let's slow it down for a moment. These are bars that I just quick tack welded to the bar on one end, just so I didn't have to hold them anymore. And then with one hand I press the rebar against the tube and make a nice simple weld. You can actually see what you're doing when you're looking through the helmet, but that buzzing sound is also a good sign that the weld is going nicely. First I just tack the second end of the tube. Then I go back and make a series of small loops that melt the rebar into the tube steel so they become one continuous piece of metal. My hand looks awkward in this video, but you, know, you just gotta hold it any way that works. Placing my hand like this helps me hold the weld tip steadily against the work. Then I make sure the first end is secured. Let's zoom in so you can better see the spiraling motion. These welds just need to hold a few hundred pounds. Most people just use tie wire, so it's not that big a deal. Definitely no need to weld the bottom side, etc. This day Dan came out to help with the welding, which freed me up to focus on getting all the specifically curved and bent and cut pieces of rebar. Dan could actually weld them in place faster than I could prepare them. For these long pieces, we generally found it was easier to curve and then throw the whole 20 foot piece of rebar over the top and then cut off that excess later. Those curved sections were always helpful somewhere else in the build. Another day putting rebar on the roof. David is down there in the bottom cutting me pieces of tie wire. He would make a few hundred at a time. These horizontal pieces always went in easily. This particular Saturday, Hunter is out to help us get in this wall. First he drills some forge deep holes to catch the end of the rebar. Use a handful of wire ties to make sure they're aligned and to pull any difficult intersections closer together for easy welding. Then I find that it's easier and faster to weld than to tie the other connections. More 
horizontals. These are just straight pieces. We cut them at the right length and then we just bend them and tie them into place. When Sherry wanted extra help, she'd just call me over. Here she's poking through wires while I twist them on my side. Once the large awkward pieces are at least hung in place, then she can come back through and, and finish securing them on her own. Another day, another section. You can see the boys working with Sherry in the background. It was like this for days. More drilled holes for more vertical rebar. And then I weld all the intersections. My parents came out for this weekend, which doubled the size of our crew. My father mostly worked with me on the rebar and my mother helped Sherry out. It was time to put up the skylight forms, and I had a rough idea of how it would go, but I didn't factor in how heavy that treated skylight bucks would be. Plan A looked more like failed modern art, and didn't hold the buck precisely or securely. Plan B worked better. Skipping ahead, you can see Plan C was even better. It was time to work on the internal walls. Here we introduced my new helper, Ethan. These internal walls start with the door box, and then I place the steel track along the base of the wall. The track is really to hold these merino wear stud right studs with the holes in them so the concrete can get all around the rebar and stuff. The high end of the studs is attached directly to the steel tubes with these self-tapping metal screws. Next we have the vertical rebar drilling into the footings as before. And then the horizontal rebar is slid in through those holes in the studs. These are all tied together. It felt so secure that I didn't even bother welding them. Then we added fabric and lath as we'd done with the other interior walls. Here's another wall segment to work on. And then here's the third. These will all be strong, load-bearing shear walls. Back to the skylight bucks. The plan was to cover the basic stick frame with OSB boards as form liners. We used construction paper to make templates, and then we cut out boards from those. For some of the skylights, we could actually reuse the templates, but for others, we needed a unique template for each side. Once the OSB was in place, the skylight forms felt quite rigid. The original plans actually called for tilting these skylights 45 degrees for maximum solar gain, but that didn't look right at all, so we compromised with this 30 degree angle. Again, all the screws were applied from the inside so we could remove them later, and then Hunter would drop out through the bottom through the rebar. Back to finishing that last interior wall. It was time to put rebar on the skylights to hold up all that concrete. We made lists of required rebar pieces with lengths and bend angles, and then we assembled one skylight at a time. I found that it was faster and easier to tack weld these small pieces in place rather than to even tie them first. Just hold them up and touch them with the welder. We would weld on the vertical pieces to tie them into the rest of the rebar structure, and then come back and add the smaller corner pieces. Bonnie came out again and helped me crank through a bunch of them. It was very handy having her to pass me pieces, otherwise I would have had to climb back all the way around and pick up each piece each time. It would have taken me several times longer. But being able to like climb into place and then just have the piece handed to you, tack it, get the next piece, tack it, uh, definitely the way to go. Then we had the plumbers come out and do their thing. First I walked around and worked through a plan with them, and then they got cracking on implementing it. Basically, the drain exits at the middle of the back wall. We have bathrooms on either side of that central room, which happens to be the laundry, so they just had to make everything exit that way. It was actually a little bit tricky for them because there are rules about going from the sink to the toilet and that the way that the things were laid out, but they figured it out. I'll put pics on the website to better explain. They had me wheelbarrowing in lots of extra dirt to help hold the pipes at the correct slopes. We also did our own electrical, similar to before. It starts with attaching the electrical boxes to the walls and then running the smurf tube. Then we pull the wires through the tubes. For the metal boxes, like the ones in the ceiling, I also needed to connect the grounds to the steel in order to pass inspection. And then the rest of the wires are just curled up and taped inside the boxes to hide them from the shotcrete. Once all the inspections were passed, we were ready for shotcrete. 